In this video, I want to have a look at the SQA National 5 Maths Paper 1 from 2017. I'm not going to go through the questions in detail, um, but I am just going to comment on the questions and see how difficult or otherwise this paper actually is. Um, there's been a petition started, as seems to be the case every year now. Um, uh, the difficulty of the exam, complaining that it was unfair and so on, but that's National 5. National 5 is the gateway qualification for higher maths. It is what it is, and the level of the paper is completely uh, consistent with the standard of, of the course that we are delivering at National 5. Um, the paper is overall, in my opinion, fair, accessible, covers the course content well, and anybody who is prepared adequately should definitely be able to access the majority of the marks. The main problem that pupils have when they're actually um, taking the exam is not so much lack of knowledge, it's knowing how and when to apply that knowledge. What I mean by that is that they don't necessarily know how to get started with a question. And when perhaps somebody afterwards goes over the question with them, they realize, well, they could have done that, or they knew how to do that. So I want to just look at the paper, identify trigger words and phrases that should generate a response uh, from the candidate that would then get them started with the question. So let's have a quick look through uh, the 15 questions in paper one. The first question is a straightforward function question. What goes out depends on what goes in. When x goes in, x squared plus 3x comes out, and all you're doing is feeding that into your function. So straightforward function question, two marks, that should be two marks in the bag. Uh, this question, uh, you've got a list of data, they've done you a favour, it's been put in order for you. All you have to do is find the semi the quartile range. So identify the quartiles, the lower quartile, the upper quartile, work out the range between the two, and then semi divided by two. Straightforward, two marks. Nothing to complain about so far. Question three, um, some fraction work. It's dividing by a fraction, so whether you do keep, flip, change, or whatever you might do, you're basically going to multiply by the reciprocal and change this into a top-heavy fraction. So again, straightforward fraction skills um, that really pre predate National 5 in terms of uh, the level of work. So again, that should be six marks in the bag so far. Some straightforward algebra. All you're doing is multiplying this, uh, the contents of the second bracket, each term by 2x, first of all, and then each term by the 3. So once you've done that, you'll get two marks, and then simplify it all by collecting like terms, and you've got your three marks then in the bag. In this question, uh, you've got a square-based pyramid placed on top of a cube. Keyword that it's a square-based pyramid, and also that what you're talking of on the bottom is a cube. You're also told that the height of the pyramid is half the height of the cube, and that itself is another key thing you've got to pick up on. So you get three key bits of information there, as well as the coordinate of point A. Now, if you know point A is 600, zero, that means that the distance from the origin to that point is 6. And because we know it's a cube, the length, the breadth, and the height are all 6. And because we know the height of the pyramid on top of the cube is half the height of the cube itself, the height must be 3. So using all of that, you can uh, work out the coordinates of B and C. B would just be 0 along the x, 6 along the y, 6 up to z. So it's just 0, 6, 6. And as for um, taking a route from the origin to point C, you're just going along by 3, back by 3, up by 6 would take you to there, up by 9 would take you there. So it's just 3, 3, 9. So again, 3D coordinates, nothing awkward there. Find the equation of a line. So that should be straightforward enough. You've got two points. Uh, you can either use y equals mx plus c, or y minus b equals mx minus a. Whichever one you have to 
you're going to use, you're going to have to find the gradient. So use the two points to find the gradient and then sub in a point and give your equation in the simplest form. So make sure you deal with any fractions or anything that you might end up with. So again, three marks, straightforward, straight line question, nothing awkward or horrible there. Um, calculate the area of the triangle. Well, there's only one thing you can do. Area equals half AB sine C. Now, you're told that you've got these two sides. So to find the area of a triangle, you want an angle sandwich. You're told that sine E is two thirds. So you've got your two sides and you've got sine of the angle in between. So you've got all the ingredients you need and that's two marks, okay? That itself tells you how straightforward the question is, that it's only worth two marks. Inequalities, bit of algebra, nothing too awkward there. Multiply the brackets, get the letters to one side, numbers to the other. Make sure you obey all the rules. Three marks, straightforward enough. Show full working, you should pick up marks along the way. Question nine, calculate the size of angle C, A, B. So, that's shaded for you, so no excuses for not knowing which angle it is. Um, keyword, ABE is a tangent. So this line here is going to be a tangent to the circle. So that means that where it meets its radius, that's going to be a 90 degree angle. So this will be as well. Um, so we're going to work at this angle because we know that 58 and something else have to add up to make 90. So that's going to be 32. Now you know that this line here and this line here, let me think, um, they're both VDI. So these two angles have to be the same because it's an isosceles triangle. So you can work out this angle because they all add up to make 180. Um, that will in turn help you work out this one because you know that these two together have to add up to make 180. Um, so this is just a supplement of the angle I've called X. And then you've got 90. You've already worked out this angle. And you can then use the fact that all three add up to 180 to find the size of angle CAB. So I saw this triangle inside a, a, a circle, um, tangent, straightforward circle stuff, angles and circles, nothing um, unfair there. Change in subject, straightforward enough, nice and easy. Um, multiply both sides by C, take away T squared, divide by 4, 3 marks, move on. Um, algebraic fractions, make the denominators the same, so you can um, just use the product of the denominators, so a cubed, so you'd end up with 3a minus 2a squared over a cubed, some of you might use kiss and smile method, um, two marks, straightforward enough. Standard deviation, <coughs> um, and you should give your answer in this format. Um, you may have a few questions in this paper that you would normally associate with a calculator paper, like standard deviation, and um, we had an area of the triangle one, but there's no reason why you can't do them when they're asking you to give your answer in a certain form or when they're asking, giving you information that you maybe otherwise wouldn't know. So use the formula, plug the values in, get your values, work it out straightforward enough. Make sure you tidy it up and there's nothing nothing uh, that's not obvious in terms of what to do there. Um, two lines you want to find algebraically where uh, the two lines meet. So in other words, you want to find the point where the two x and y values will be the same. So it's simultaneous equations. So you can either... Um, just use substitution, or you can just make either the first terms or the middle terms uh, match and take it from there. So straightforward, shouldn't cause you any bother. Completing the square, um, you're told that the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 5. So that means that a will be 5, because when x is negative 5, 5, uh, negative 5 and 5 will give you 0. 0 squared is the lowest anything squared can be, which is 0. And now that you know that it comes in the form of x minus 5 squared plus b, you know that if the point 
negative 3, 8 satisfies, if it lies in the parabola, it has to satisfy that equation. Replace the y value with 8, replace the x with negative 3, and you can just do some algebra to work out, solve that equation and work out the value of b. Okay. Uh, this last question, people didn't like it, but you've just got to realize that it's um, two similar triangles. One, if you like, on top of the other. If we can place it, uh, if we can uh, put it that way. Um, you know that um, with similar triangles, if the angles are the same, the corresponding angles are the same, and the, tri the triangles are similar, and you just set up an equation, um, you can just say, well, the scale factor of enlargement is 7 over 5. So you just say 7 over 5. Because the corresponding angles are the same, the ratio of corresponding sides has to be the same as well. Now, the length of this purple triangle, the base of it, would be x plus 2.6. And the length of the red one, its base, would be x. And you just have fraction equal to fraction. And you can then just solve it from there by doing cross multiplication or whatever. So I'm sure a lot of people didn't like this question, but it's the last question in the paper. It's going to separate the men from the boys, and there's no reason why you couldn't pick up um, most, if not all, of the marks there as well. So overall, a fair paper one, especially the start of it, starts you off nice and straightforward, build up your confidence. But what you've got to do is identify the type of question that you are facing so that you can use the right tool for the job, as it were. And that's, for so many people, the downfall. Um, in an exam. So look out for trigger words, look out for certain scenarios, look out for things that um, should generate a response on your part so that you would know uh, exactly what to do and what the question is looking for. Okay, so we'll have a look in another video at paper two and see what we think of that. Thanks for watching.